Welcome to Documentary First, an inside look at a first time filmmaker's journey. I am your host, Josh Lindsay from the Movie Proposal Podcast. And with us is our first time filmmaker, Christian Taylor. Hey, how you doing? Good, Christian. How are you? Good, thank you. Happy to be here. And coming live from the deep, dark places of his basement, couldn't do it without him, Jason Rugg. How's it going? Jason? Hey there. You know, it just dawned on me. At some point, we do have to change your opening. We, we need to start thinking about that, uh, which prompts me to advertise that on December 1st, we are doing a Patreon live stream for every level. Uh, and it's just a conversation with me. And we're going to be talking about sort of the future of the podcast and uh, the naming of our brand and a whole bunch of other stuff. So uh, if you want to be a part of this conversation, um, join our Patreon those of you that are supporters, we look forward to seeing you. So uh, yeah, you can weigh in about this new opening. If you feel want to write something, go right ahead. We'll consider it. Welcome to Documentary Second. I'm... No, James. <laughs> Documentary James... Thirds. <laughs> James said we could not do that. He said that would be terrible. I believe him. He's I had agree. some good ideas. <laughs> Welcome to Documentary Ongoing. I'm your host. <laughs> all right well where are we today today is uh well as we're recording it's november 17 this is going to come out the day before thanksgiving next week so you guys i thought we ought to do a thanksgiving episode <laughs> where we talk about stuff we're thankful for and maybe how to make it through the holidays as a film production person whatever you're doing kind of what it's like in the industry during the holidays so i mean what do you guys think are you in in for that let's do it Sounds all right good. i also ask you to think about your favorite thanksgiving movies or movies that have thanksgiving scenes in them uh did you give that any thought yep. i did i don't know if josh did yes <laughs> 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 awesome thank you jason for doing your homework assignment why don't you go first tell us some of your favorite thanksgiving themed movies or movies with thanksgiving scenes in them okay so i could go for the just you know traditional easy you know planes trains and automobiles oh, okay. uh, but but i'm gonna leave that one for josh because he picks the basic ones it's thank fine you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> i think uh one of my favorite uh movies that my, my family tends to watch uh, ever, not necessarily on Thanksgiving, but around Thanksgiving is while you were sleeping. Have either of you seen that? Oh, movie? I think I do. Can you remind me of that? Sandra please? Bullock. Yeah, Sandra Bullock and um, <laughs> was uh, Bill Pullman, I think his name is. Yeah. Um, a guy falls on the railroad tracks and she saves his life, but he ends up in a coma. And to get into the hospital, she says she's his fiance, but she actually has never really talked to him. She just sees him every day when he gets on the train and goes through her booth. And so she winds up entangled in his family who are all like, Oh, I, I didn't even know he had a fiance. Like, you know, he's a little bit estranged and they don't really talk all that much. And so she then masquerades in his family uh, as fiance around Thanksgiving. And it's a really, really fun uh, romantic comedy. Um, I don't actually, I don't know if I would actually categorize. I guess it's a romantic comedy. I don't, I, I don't know. Yeah. I haven't seen it in a while, but it's, it's a pretty fun movie. All romantic right. And tell, movie for sure. tell us the title one more time. While you were sleeping. While you were sleeping. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to have to remind myself and check out that movie. Thank you for that, Jason. All right, Josh, what you got? Uh, I don't really think of there being a traditional Thanksgiving movie, but yes, planes, trains, and automobile qualifies. <laughs> and it is a fantastic <laughs> film. And, uh, Quite frankly, better than while you were sleeping. Isn't isn't planes, trains, and automobiles the one where they? It's Steve Martin and John Candy. Maybe is that right, John You're, Candy? It sounds like you haven't seen this one in a while. Not in a while, but isn't that one where they can't get anywhere, so they have to take every form of transportation? Yes. It's a snowstorm or something. Yeah, he's trying to get out of New York, get back to Chicago, and everyone's trying to get home, and the weather and. And he just serendipitously ends up with John Candy, who is a rather annoying travel partner, uh, but they just keep ending up together, even though Steve Martin tries to get away from him. <laughs> and, but I thought that one was for Christmas. Well, it has a Christmas feel. And that, that was my point. 
because I, I, I actually had to look up Thanksgiving movies. I'm like, what movies are there for Thanksgiving? And then Planes, Trains, and Automobiles is there because he's going home for Thanksgiving. But no one thinks of it as Thanksgiving. They, it does feel more like Christmas. That's interesting. Yeah, I really thought it was a Christmas movie. Oh, all right. Well, I have one. Um, and my pick is The Blind Side. Okay, you're going to have to qualify that as why is that Thanksgiving? That's well, another Sandra Bullock movie. Why does she is. only make Thanksgiving movies? It <laughs> <laughs> is another Sandra Bullock movie. Well, this is not a Thanksgiving movie, but remember I said it has to have a Thanksgiving scene in it. And so if you recall, there is a Thanksgiving scene in this film because, um, you know, it starts off with Michael starting at school and they kind of go through the fall of football season and then they have Thanksgiving um, and the big old Miss game is on at Thanksgiving. And, you know, they're like grabbing food and trying to watch the old Miss game, which is, you know, what most of my family does every Thanksgiving, old Miss Mississippi state. And then, uh, you know, he gets very, I guess, confused or, and goes and sits at the dining room table. So they all leave the Ole Miss game and go and sit at the table and have a traditional Thanksgiving meal. It's probably the first one that he had ever had like that. So it's very moving and emotional. And I love that movie. Anyway, I have a lot of, you know, things I can relate to about that. I actually did take in a, a young man very much like Michael. Uh, he was from the Congo and was ended up in our area and was sort of homeless and needed a family. So I can really relate to that. Of course, I'm also an Ole Miss fan. So there's that as well. All right. And she's from the South, the character anyway. So are you? Yeah. Blonde hair, you know, about the same age. All right. Enough, enough about Thanksgiving movies. You got to talk Netflix. I can't believe I haven't heard. Like, did they say, did they say anything about the Netflix meeting? Oh, well, that was an interesting experience. So, um, our, uh, you know, representative booked his pl you know, plane flight on his own dime, flew over to Netflix, had four meetings. You know, one was with the doc series guy for the Brave Dutch. And the, uh, another one was for uh, documentary sales to pitch the girl who wore freedom. And when he got there that day, I guess the next day, three of the meetings canceled because of different various reasons. And one of them was the doc series guy. Yeah. So that was disappointing, but in a surprise turnaround, he did get to meet with the documentary film buyer. He pitched him four films and ours was the only one he was interested in and said he would watch. Wow. So uh, that was really the best we could hope for out of that meeting. And, uh, you know, of course that was just a few days ago and we haven't heard anything about that, but um, I was encouraged and it does just show you the up and down of the film business. Um, and sadly, um, because of that, uh, it seems we lost our, um, you know, our cinematographer and two of our producers that had signed on um, just because I think they were hoping we'd film in the spring and it doesn't look like that's going to happen now. I think maybe the earliest that we would be able to pitch the Brave Dutch would be, you know, in Jan mid January. So uh, those are the breaks in the filmmaking business. And I was super disappointed to hear about that. Uh, that kind of broke my heart a little bit, but it is what it is. And we will just take one step at a time. I mean, this is where my faith kind of buoys me during this time. You know, if I, I really do believe that God has called me to do this, he opens the doors for me and um, you know, he brings people into the project that I think are supposed to be there. Now, what's interesting is that doesn't mean everything's always going to go perfectly. Um, you know, we had a really bad experience uh, with the girl who wore freedom with some crew members and that ended not, up not being good, but it was a wonderful opportunity for us to um, do production differently is what I was saying in a way that for me is more Christ-like in the way that you treat people or you think about disappointments or, um, you know, you, you handle people that are challenging. And so in this, I look at this situation the same way. Um, I had an opportunity to handle this disappointment in one way or the other. I hope I can, um, handle it with grace. It doesn't mean I wasn't angry or upset. Uh, it just means that I have to accept it is what it is. And uh, there are things that are out of my control and the budget is one of them. And at this point, so. 
So what? What you said? January would be the next time to pitch. Are you talking about to Netflix or what? what, what why January? Yeah, for sure, for sure to Netflix. But I mean, they're going to pitch um, this to all streaming channels and you know cable stuff. And so um, that's certainly not going to be happening now till the middle of January. And I think what's frustrating with the doc, um, you know, or the distributors, they want to pitch in person. You know, I mean, thinking about trying to sell things over Zoom, it's just it's just not the same, you know, seeing people, their relationships, their relationships that you've built over 25 years, let's say, you know, their kids, you, you know, you're friends with them. And so that's part of establishing that trust in person. And I think they'd really rather go back after two years to pitching in person. So. And that's the thing and too, is like, January? go ahead. Late November into December in the film industry is kind of just everything shuts down pretty much it's just like a lot of people travel home or you know that sort of thing you've got a lot of high-powered people who make a lot of money and they're just like no i'm not going to be here this month like that that's pretty well known that like that that and sundance are two times when it's like almost impossible to get yes. anything done <laughs> in yeah, Hollywood. it's hard during can too which is in may yeah. i mean yeah, that was one thing we, when we started talking about uh, the ebbs and flows of the film industry, particularly during the holidays and how you handle things. Um, yeah, I mean, once it gets to this time in the year, it's very difficult to get anything done in terms of meetings and sales. And, you know, you can still do some filming around the holidays. That has happened. But, um, you know, you can do some editing around the holidays. But, um, you know, it's it's not, you don't take full scale productions out, you know, like first of Thanksgiving or whatever, you know, right before Thanksgiving or during the Christmas holidays. I mean, unless you're specifically filming around those times. Um, so, so yeah, you know, you have to expect that kind of lull in this industry, I think, and make sure that you're working on what you can work on and make sure that you're not stressing out that, oh my gosh, nothing is happening because you just need to expect it. So what will you do uh, in the interim then? Well, um, we are now going to have to go back and retool the Brave Dutch package. And we're going to have to be interviewing cinematographers and other producers now for the Brave Dutch. So that's a new thing on my list. And we are continuing with the Brave Dutch to develop story. You know, we have a lot of uh, research and development that can keep us busy. There is no time wasted here. Um and that means, you know, the more we have time to do that now, the better prepared we'll be once we have the funding in and we're ready to go. So uh, we're not wasting any time with that. And um, I think I may have mentioned it here, but we've been talking to the town of Carenton about also doing a um, documentary about the Battle of Carenton. So I'm going to be going to Normandy for Christmas. So we're going to leave middle of December and be gone until the end of December. And so I'll have meetings there in uh, Carenton for, you know, that documentary with various different people. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I got a lot of work to do. I also have to finish a house renovation, which may kill me. I may be finished at the end of that. Um, anyway, so we got a lot still to do and the girl who wore freedom is still chugging along. Um, I think, uh, you know, we were super, our spirits were super lifted with that news this week. We're really hoping that, um, you know, things continue to look up for this little film. It is still on Delta. People are enjoying it. I'm getting text messages and emails. But the most exciting thing is uh, we are working to strike a deal with the distributor to uh, start selling our DVDs. It looks like we're really pretty close there. And uh, I can't wait for that, for us to be able to say on our social media, DVDs for sale, or, you know, after all of our events, being able to sell those. It seems like our audience that still uses DVDs. So I don't think that that is true uh, all over the place or with everyone, but uh, they still seem to be popular. People are asking for asking them for us for those all the time. And the other good news we've gotten is that FFS did uh, strike a deal with Voodoo. So the girl who wore freedom will be on Voodoo in the new year. Um, so at least that is another way that people can can watch the film. So, awesome. yeah, so there's good stuff happening. I Voodoo, do you? <laughs> I do not. <laughs> well, we, we used to Fandango, but uh, now it's Voodoo. So, yeah, they're merged. Right. 
so sure. it is um when it's on voodoo is that like you pay a subscription and you get to watch it or is it like you have to buy it you know how how can people watch it on voodoo Do you that's know? a great question there jason i wish i knew the answer to that one <laughs> but uh, i do know you can have a subscription to voodoo but i also think there is a pay option right uh, josh you know the only, I, i'm sure there's lots of ways you can do it the only way i've used it is you we look for a particular movie i see it's on voodoo and we'll just rent it and you you have access to watch it for two days and that's about it there are yeah. some free series on here. It's not going to be free, right? Mine is not going to be free, no. Okay, so it must be that it's available for purchase or rental. That's yeah. going to be my guess because I don't see any way to subscribe to it. So Yeah, I'm well, guessing that's the way it's going to be. Yeah. Well, cool. So we'll see. And then we have a big, you know, to-do to plan for in June. So we'll also start going into overdrive planning for the girly war freedom in normandy uh on june 5th that's with the world war ii uh the gi film festival or no sorry the world war ii normandy film festival through the world war ii foundation um that's tim gray's organization uh but it's already sold out so we're trying to um make a couple of other screenings that anybody could go to so we're busy working on that thanks to flo boucherie and michelle coupe so we'll keep you guys updated about that. So the guy who um, took a look or wanted to take a look at your film, you know, the meeting that didn't happen that turned into the meeting that did happen. What's next with that? So, uh, you know, I was told that this guy is good for his word and he will watch our film. I mean, of course, there's no timeline, so he'll watch it. And I guess he makes a decision as to whether or not to pass it up the chain or um, purchase the film. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. We'll just kind of, that's kind of a waiting game. But what what is he a part of? Netflix. Oh, I misunderstood. Yeah. I thought it was another serendipitous meeting with some other company. No, okay. no, 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 no. Out of the, out of the four meetings, the only one um, we got was, you know, with this guy who was the documentary film buyer. So there were four Netflix meetings. Is mm -hmm. that what you're saying? Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's what we didn't. We thought there was just like one Netflix meeting. We oh, yes. So sorry. No, there were four people under the yeah. umbrella. Okay. And I was told that it's pretty much a ghost town at Netflix. You know, they're still taking coronavirus pretty seriously. People are still wearing masks around there and that, you know, people just are not reporting to work like they were in the past. So we really are hoping things can start turning around so that we can get back to business out there. All right. So we're in the doldrums of filmmaking. For right now, we're in the doldrums <laughs> of filmmaking, which is why we're doing a thankfulness episode. So uh, I'd like to start that. Uh, you two uh, begin thinking about things you're thankful for. It could be personally or professionally or whatever. Uh, I'm going to kind of run down a list of my things. Um, in preparation for this episode, I really started looking back at the year. And as I did, you know, it's, I can tend to forget the things back in January. I mean, I remember the hard stuff that kind of started for me in June and I've been, you know, I've been going through a really tough time, you know, with my dad. And then uh, I did go to Normandy for four weeks, but that um, I, at the same time, I was starting this house renovation, which has just expanded exponentially and now is about to kill me. Um, and, you know, things with my father are still challenging. I'm now in Virginia with my sister who just had her fifth baby and I'm trying to work from here. And that's been interesting. So, um, you know, I, my mind is focused on those things. And so I really, I went back to my pictures. This is how I remember what actually happened this year is that I went back to my picture library and I just started going through the pictures. And it reminded me that we had the Channeler Film Festival back in January. We went to the um, Polson, uh, the film festival, uh, Flathead Lake International Cinema Fest in Polson, Montana. Um, you know, we went to the Buford Film Festival in February in South Carolina, the Julian Dubuque Film Festival in Iowa in May, and then the GI Film Festival was virtual, but we were a part of that as well. And in those film festivals, you know, we won 
many awards. We met incredible people. We saw really interesting locations that I'd never been to before and, you know, could even be considered filming locations going forward. They were so awesome. Um, and so, you know, I was, I was really blown away by what kind of came out of that first of the year, including meeting Virginia, no, I'm sorry, Virginia Durr, who is our Delta representative. You know, she's the woman from Normandy. She saw our film. She's like, everybody in the world needs to see this. We're going to put it on Delta. And, you know, that was how that happened at the Beaufort, you know, film festival at the Julian Dubuque International Film Festival. That's where I met Mary Owen and Mary Owen then introduced me to Virgil Films. And so I look at kind of where we are today and it was the first half of the year is where those seeds were planted. Uh, and, you know, if anybody ever wonders, is it worth it to, you know, submit, pay this money to go to film festivals, you know, or to enter them to begin with, and then to go to them, I can say without a doubt that for me and our projects, those film festivals were instrumental, really. Um, so I'm very thankful for those things. Um, I was with C.O. Bauer, one of the wonderful World War II veterans in our film this year for his 78th birthday. So that was amazing. I, I then remembered that I met Tulai Van Manen and she is the Dutch woman that has, you know, been helping us with the Brave Dutch. And because of her help, our story has exploded and we've met so many people and found locations and our plan is coming together because of her involvement. Um, I started thinking about Hunter. Hunter left us in February to join the Navy and he put Ben Fython in his place and another 101st soldier who's been incredibly helpful to us and a blessing. And now Hunter has gone through officer training um, he is, you know, at his first flying school, he's now been flying for a couple of weeks, learning how to land in crosswinds just today and is really almost done with this phase. He'll go to Corpus Christi next to learn how to fly other things, but that's a huge transition in his life. Um, and so, you know, I'm thankful for that. And then I am really thankful for the internet because without the internet, I would not have been able to work you know, the second half of the year with everything that's been happening uh, in my own life, in my life personally, wouldn't be able to keep up with these podcasts. Uh, so I feel extremely grateful for what's happened this year. And that only scratches the surface. When I think about the people on our team that have kept our project going, um, starting with you two guys, I mean, I was thinking about this the other day, you know, you are so faithful to be here. And, um, I love our time together. Honestly, I love talking with you, talking movies or just catching up, uh, but it is a commitment that you make every week to be here. And you both make such a huge difference to this podcast. So I am super grateful for you, Jason Hoban or Hoban. I always say his name wrong. Jason Hoban, who uh, faithfully edits this podcast every week. He listens to the podcast and enjoys it, has a great attitude about it. He's been such a blessing. Jonathan Liu is the one that updates or uploads this to um, all of the podcast streaming services faithfully every week and puts them on Twitter. I'm so thankful for him. And then, you know, there's Savannah Woods and Melissa Perkins and Mindy Cook. Um, there, Marsha Snyder is, is sort of our shipping uh, department. She's been amazing. So, um, you know, this would not happen without all of these people who give their time and um, Bob and Janie Miller. I mean, they have been instrumental to making this project happen financially, um, emotionally, just in every other way. I don't know if you guys have seen this, if you're listening to this podcast, but Bob and Janie volunteer for Reads Across America. And they um, there was just this video that we put out on our social media that talks about the work they do and the people that volunteer for Reads Across America. I was super moving. Um, and I love how committed they are to the preservation of memory. Both of their fathers did fight in World War II and they're so committed to honoring their memories and all of you know the other GIs that fought for our freedom. So so thankful for Bob and Janie Miller, David Patterson, who's been incredible, um, you know, for the last couple of years, I don't know where we'd be without him. So I have a heart full of thanks. 
Uh, I don't know about you guys, uh, but let me hear what you're thankful for. Uh, we should have had Christian go last. Yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> Josh and I combined are <laughs> going to be about compete. a quarter of that. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, I'm thankful for you. Oh, uh, and Jason, and, and, I'm thankful for you. All right. <laughs> the end <laughs> oh, you guys. Well, that's it for this week's episode thanks for listening to documentary ongoing um i'll say i'm thankful for uh this is the, the second time in 20 years that we're not traveling for thanksgiving we're staying home so i'm i'm thrilled about that and we'll be having brisket instead of turkey Really? Ooh. How did that happen? <laughs> well, because we were, I mean, I don't know about you, but I enjoy turkey at Thanksgiving, but that's the only time of the year that I ever eat turkey. I never go to a restaurant or ask Angie to pick up turkey. And I never think like, let's get turkey. And it's just Thanksgiving. Well, we were at church a couple years ago and the pastor said he doesn't like turkey. And so for Thanksgiving, they have roast beef. And my son and I looked at each other like, why haven't we been doing this? Why haven't we been doing this? <laughs> but then we always go to someone else's house. And so you can't really, you know, you, you get what you get served. And well, now we're hosting. So we're getting burnt and brisket. I'm so pumped. Awesome. Are you making it yourself? Oh, no, no, no. That's the other best part about it. We're getting it catered. <laughs> Steamboat barbecue here in Wheaton. Very excited. Well, who is coming to this Thanksgiving? Uh, Angie's side of the family. We we were supposed to go to St. Louis to see her family, but my son made the basketball team. Woohoo! And uh, we got to stay in town for that. So now they're coming up to us. Ah, that's great. Well, this is going to be fun. I can't. I'll, we'll have to check in with you and see how that goes. Over with everybody. Jason. And then yeah, I think. See, Christian took one of mine, which was that I'm I'm really thankful for the internet. Because <laughs> um, it's just been it's been a really cool year of just like people who I've gotten to meet and connect with over the internet. Like when I went out to LA, I met a bunch of people who the only reason I knew who they were and they knew who I was, was because of Twitter like that. We had connected over Twitter and had talked and become friends. And so it's just, I don't know. I, I'm really thankful for technology as much as I despise technology sometimes and think that it's tearing us apart <laughs> the internet uh, in particular um i'm really thankful for um what it's done in my life this year um and then yeah i am really thankful for both of you and for this podcast it's been fun every single week to, to get together with you guys and even though you know christian goes off and josh gets busy and i get busy and we're not always here every single week it's it's been a lot of fun to uh to be together pretty regularly so yeah I'm just, uh, I'm thankful and excited for where everything's headed. Yeah, me too. Speaking of that, do you have any updates of your own stuff? What's going on with, you know, Jax and Sean? And... Um, we had some pretty cool stuff happen uh, this last week. Um, so I didn't get to go because I was out in LA and it was just, it, life was a little bit too crazy for me to go to this thing. Um, there was an act one barbecue, which I've talked about act one before. It's a Christian incubator for screenwriters and producers and directors. And um, so Sean got to go cause he lives out there in California. And so he, you know, <laughs> drove all the way in for it and um, had some really cool conversations and encouragement with people who had seen it and were talking about it. And um yeah, it was it was pretty cool. And we might be getting some meetings out of uh, these conversations and just that we have something to show for it. At this point, we have a hundred over 150 sketches available on our um, Instagram. So like if you want to go see if we're funny, you can just go see if we're funny. And if we're not funny to you, we're not funny to you and go away. But we have over 8000 people who think we're funny already and following us awesome. so it's it's kind of cool. It's kind of a, a proof of, hey, look at this, you know, we we made this thing and then we're still making it every single day. We're putting up a new animation. And uh, so, yeah, it's already starting to bear some fruit and get us some places. We'll see what actually happens with it. Um, we're just excited to see where it goes. That's awesome. Congratulations to you. It's fun to watch your journey as well. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that kind of 
wraps it up for this Thanksgiving episode. And uh, I just want to say overall, I'm thankful for our listeners that keep listening each week, our Patreon supporters that listen and support us. And uh, we hope that you have an incredibly thankful Thanksgiving. You know, I heard a long time ago, a thankful heart is a happy heart. So don't forget that. Josh, you're muted. Oh, you know what? Uh, I pulled something up in preparation to close, but it doesn't, it turns my mute button function off. So sorry to ruin the moment. Um, <laughs> sometimes I'm thankful for technology, but sometimes I'm not so thankful for technology. And it didn't work. But. <laughs> Anyhow. Okay, well, on that note, um, Christian, thankful for you as well thankful to our listeners so thank you for listening today to documentary first where we believe everyone has a story to tell and you could be the one to tell it yes you can bye everybody